Welcome to my uh, first in a series of videos where I'll be, be talking about how to world build and jamming tips and stuff like that um, for your needs. And you can take this information or advice as you go, but this is for mainly for people that are perhaps starting out on their first journey as a GM in any game um, pertaining to mostly fantasy. So you got 5e, Pathfinder, um, Rifts, that, any of that kind of stuff. Okay. So for this one, we are going to uh, <coughs> start with the map. Okay. Now the map is actually your most important source of material because it helps you into your world, world building ideas for your story and all that fun stuff. So first off, uh, large maps give a uh, idea of a larger campaign design. So this is, if you are going for that um, larger than life, open world disc type uh, story that'll take a long time to finish from start to finish and everything contained within smaller maps give a shorter or one shot design if you're looking to you know ease into your first sort of home brewed world okay uh, you can do uh, multiple worlds if you're uh, really heavy into it so players start in one land and may end up in uh, another land and then may end up the campaign finishing up in another land if you're so inclined. It's really how you set the tone for what your story is going to be about. So the map or maps will be your sort of Bible and kind of where you're making the players go and what they're going to do. Smaller maps can be for one shots um, and it is great to actually start off in a smaller venue to get your feet wet see your play style figure yourself out and what you want to do locations must mean something so you know whether you're going to have story driven areas or you're going to have quest related content in those areas. Each area kind of has to make sense and why it's there. You can have areas that are where nothing's there and perhaps they're just empty um, for later additions if you choose. Um, so story driven areas are definitely um, areas that you want to make sure that you know where your player is going, what they're going to encounter. Quest-related areas obviously are going to pertain to the quests that the players will be encountering. Travel time, which on the map itself, should be simple. So as an example, you have a square grid on your map where you can have one square as one day by foot, or you can have two squares per day by horseback, carriage, that kind of thing. It makes it easier for travel time. Um, if you're the type that uh, will put a lot of encounters during travel time for the players as they rest, as they get up, as they move, that will be up to you on your design and what they encounter. Um, the other thing is, is as they're traveling, you want to have your areas kind of like specific to what is being encountered. For example, a forest may have animals only that are encountered, you know, and the various different levels that the players will encounter and fight. Some areas perhaps may be higher level than what the players are, but, you know, that'll be your decision and kind of like how you deal with the travel time and encounter time. Cities, towns, villages are important for shopping, 
quest pickups. I so with job board. So say the uh, players have entered a city, perhaps for the first time. You can make the quests available through a job board. So like a posting, um, a plaque, you know. Uh, maybe you have a building specific in that city or town that is owned by a job board and that kind of gatekeeps the quest, gives the players a quest, gives the players the reward if there's any details of the quest, maybe that kind of thing. Also, cities, towns, and villages are important for NPC interaction, so uh, any important NPC that you have in your world that is connected to the story or perhaps connected to a specific quest line, this is where you can flush out <clears throat> some of that information. Use the map to tell your story. Use the map to tell about possible historic legends, secrets. Each area will kind of have its own story if you want it to be like that. Perhaps there was an area that had a war that happened a long time ago, and there was a battle that happened there, and, and explain maybe a little bit on the outcome of that or rumors about that, you know. You want to have legends, perhaps, of uh, a giant creature that somebody, saw, a group took down or something or other to make it kind of like lore heavy. Um, open world, if you're going with open world, it's very important to flush out uh, details like this in your map. So as you can see here, uh, this is an example of a possible map that you can have. And you can see that it's fairly sized, so that way you have many locations that you can give your players access to. So you know that your players are going to go off the beaten path, especially when a map's presented as such. Uh, with quests especially, you can have them spread out all over the place on however you want. You can even have, uh, as you can see on this map, you, you have a very large area of uh, water even there you can have some quests perhaps like an underwater ruins or there's perhaps pirates up there that need to be dealt with so you could go nuts in that respect individual location descriptions as i sort of touched on does flush out your world to uh, lore as i said um Heavier descriptions for a town or a city give the players an idea of what's there, perhaps what's sold as items. Maybe there's a village that only sells spears and potions because they're poor. Or you have a huge city that's fortified and sells, you know, heavy armor or, you know, certain type of weapons. Or there's a town where there's a uh, heavy influence of magic so you have a big magic shop you know you can really sink your teeth into that sort of thing but you want to flush these individual uh, uh, locations out so it gives your players ideas of kind of like what's there you don't want to give away everything but you just want to give little little bits to these locations so on your map, you're going to want to have um, hidden text markers for quests or secret encounters, even story beats where players go. So that way it reminds you of what's there, where the players go, what they encounter. Um, be, players are going to go off the beaten path, um, even in a point A to point B sort of adventure. Uh, you're going to have them do unorthodox moves or decisions or want to check out certain areas. So you kind of want to be prepared for that and how you deal with that accordingly. Um, but having hidden markers, so hidden text on the map, uh, helps you as a GM to figure out you know where things are. Sometimes with quest markers, as they read or get quests on the job board, you can use these to reveal to the players on the map where they are, where these quests are. 
So it helps them to figure out, okay, well, this is over here and to this location. So we have this quest over here. We have that quest over there. So we can decide along the way where we want to go first. Change as you go. As you get more familiar with your player characters, your group, you can kind of critique um, locations. Like, remember how I was saying there's like you can have like empty areas? Perhaps these areas can be now for individual player character quests going on on their backstory, maybe. Um, you know, you can add things. You don't always have to be, you know, make your map and you're done. You can always add things along the way between sessions. It's a great way to keep the PCs on their toes and a great, great way to keep the interest there. So that is really up to you. Individual map scenes for certain areas like cities and towns helps kind of like open up the world a little bit here. Um, but also theater of the mind works best for certain quests. Like if it's simply as a non-combat related quest, such as going to talk to someone about something and resolving perhaps a domestic issue. Um, but individual scenes are really up to you on if you want maps or, um, Dungeons, maybe, in certain areas for those scenes. Obviously, dungeons are a big part of it, um, but it's really up to you on kind of how you want the locations to be encountered by your players. Uh, that's really all I'm going to start with with the map, because it uh, does start with a map, does start your um, sort of creation process with a map, and you can basically explode from there. On the next video, I will be going over more and going into your world creation um, and all the documents and stuff like that. So until then, I uh, will <coughs> be heading out.